Assalamu alaikum, my dear brothers and sisters, my respected viewers from all over the world. I stand in Karbala, another day here in Karbala, another day in the Karbala, of Imam al Hussein, peace be upon him, another day in the Karbala, of Fadl Abbas, peace be upon him. Tonight, we will visit a maqam, a holy pilgrimage site of. Tonight, we will visit a maqam, a holy site here in Karbala. It is narrated that Imam al Hussein, alayhi salam, on the 8th of the Hujjah, left Medina al Munawwara. And on the 2nd of Muharram, in the year 60, after Hijrah, Abi Abdullah, peace be upon him, arrived in Karbala. It is narrated that he arrived here in this area. Behind me here is the Mukhayyim that he set forth. Abi Abdullah arrived here in Karbala and he said, My grandfather, Muhammad, وسلم, peace be upon him and his family, narrated to me that here, this area, is the place where we will set up our camps. Here, in this area, is the place where our blood will be shed. Here, in this area, we will face affliction. Here in Karbala, here in the camps, in the Mukhayyam, in the tents of Abi Abdullah al Hussein, is where all tragedies began, where all calamities began. Now, inshallah, we will go towards the maqam to visit this holy site and talk more about the history and talk more about what is found inside. Welcome again, my dear viewers. I now have entered the Holy Mukhayyam, the Holy Tent of Abi Abdullah al Hussein, peace be upon him, here in Karbala. The Holy Tent, the Holy Mukhayyam, or as our Iranian brothers call it, the Khaymaga, is, near, is located about 300 meters southwest from the Ha'ir, from the Holy Perimeter of Abi Abdullah al Hussein's shrine, peace be upon him. Southwest of this Holy Shrine lies this Mukhayyam. And this is the area in which Imam al Hussein, peace be upon him, set camp. This is the area in which Imam al Hussein, peace be upon him, placed his companions, placed his family members. Now I stand here in this area, and behind me is the Mukhayyim or the Khayma, the tent of Aba Fadl al Abbas ibn Amir al Mu'mineen, peace be upon him. This Khayma here, as you can see, is the first Khayma we come across, which is the tent of Fadl al Abbas. On top of us is a holy dome. The first dome you see when you walk on the street, you witness this dome here. The dome after it, which is the largest dome, is the dome of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. There's approximately 10 domes that the Khuddam, the servants of Abi Abdullah al Hussein, built in this area. Now we have visited this first dome, which is where Fadl Abbas would stay. And we can say that Imam al Hussein had a reasoning behind placing his brother at the beginning of his tents. Aba Fadl Abbas, salamullahi alayhi, as you guys all know, is Sahib al Alam. He's the one who is called Alam Dar, the one who holds the banner of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. If Aba Fadl Abbas' banner falls, the whole army disunites. So there is importance for him being placed here in the beginning of this holy Mukhayyim. Now, inshallah, we will continue and we will go to the next khayma. And as we walk, we will talk about the khayma itself and the history of this maqam. Each place will be a short history of the maqam and of the area and of the khayma of the tent that is placed here. Now, inshallah, we will visit the holy, the holy maqam and we will continue onwards, inshallah.
we have, third, we have moved further down in this holy maqam. We are now in the far right corner of the holy mukhayyam, of the holy pilgrimage sites, of the tents of Abi Abdullah al-Hussein, peace be upon him. Now as I promised, I will shed some light, some history concerning this area here. For a long time, until the year 1276 after Hijrah, this area used to be called by al mukhayyam or al Sada area. A lot of the people around here were Sada from the descendants of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they took care of this area. Until the year 1276, this area was called al mukhayyam District or al Sada District. Now there's a lot of history in this area and it's not until the year of 2003 when the fall of the, the regime of Saddam alayhi la'na that they began constructing this place as you see now. This beauty and this design, these ayat al Qur'aniya and this beautiful shubak behind me. Now where I'm standing right now is the khayma of Al-Qasim ibn Al-Hasan Al-Mujtaba alayhi salatu wassalam, peace be upon him. This is the tent wherein Al-Qasim ibn Al-Hasan ibn Ali, peace be upon him, would reside. This is the area in which Al-Qasim was brought by his uncle Abi Abdullah al Hussein, slaughtered and he put him here. After Al-Qasim's maqtal, his uncle Abi Abdullah carried Al-Qasim from the point where he was killed all the way here and placed him here. Now to go through some more history of this maqam. In 2008, I stated that the Atab al husayniya began getting responsibility for the maqam. So they began building this maqam as you see today. Now they faced a lot of problems, but alhamdulillah, as you see today, this maqam is full of beauty, full of history. When the zuwar come in here, I want the zuwar to close their eyes and pretend and think that in front of them is nothing but a khayma, a tent. And in these tents gathered the severed and slaughtered bodies of the family of Abi Abdullah al Hussein, of the companions of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Each tent tells us a story. Each tent brings us back to the maqtal in Karbala. Each tent tells us how these shuhada were brought by Abi Abdullah alayhi salam. He carried them all the way here. Now, as we walked, we went through and we looked at the tent of Aba Fadl al-Abbas alayhi alayhi. And then we walked to the far right corner of the Makhayim and now we are at the Maqam and the Khayma of Al Qasim ibn Al Hassan. Now, inshallah, we're going to go move on and go to a different Khayma and talk more about the history of the Maqam and talk more about the next Khayma we're going to go to, inshallah. Now we just left the khayma, the tent of Al Qasim ibn Al Hassan al Mujtaba, peace be upon him. And here I am now, behind me, as the khayma of Imam Ali ibn Al Hussein al Sajjad Zain al Abidin, peace be upon him. Maridu Karbala, the one who could not come to his father's aid in Karbala because he was too sick to attend to his father to aid him in Karbala. Imam Sajjad played an important role in Karbala. Imam Sajjad, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, narrated to us the tragedy of Karbala as he was there with his son, Imam Al Baqir, peace be upon him. This here in this area was his tent next to his auntie Zainab Al Kubra, which is in front of me now. And after we're finished here, we will go there. But before we move on, we will talk about some history of this maqam. Now, there isn't any clear cut evidence from a historian from maybe 1400 years back talking about this maqam, but we do have Western explorers who came to Karbala who narrated about this maqam. The first example I will narrate to you was a man by the name of Karsten Niebuhr. He was a German explorer German geographer, German mapper. 
This man was a traveler who used to travel all over the world and he had manuscripts and he had memoirs that he wrote. Of these memoirs, it is narrated in the year 1765 after Christ, he came to Karbala. This man is known for his expedition. His expedition was to shed light on the Old Testament in order to see what in the Old Testament from the villages, from the mountains, and from what's narrated in the Old Testament is true. And on his trip in the year 1675 AC, this man passed by Karbala. And I will narrate to you the exact nas of his kalam. He says, this area, he talks about the Makhayim, this area had become a beautiful garden that was blessed and rich in soil and nutrients. I had also witnessed many blessings and many wonders from the water that was in this area. The man, the explorer, the traveler is talking about the Bi'r, the well of Aba Fadl al-Abbas, salamullahi alayhi, peace be upon him, which we will talk and shed light upon after, inshallah. But this man here in the year 1675, after Christ came here and witnessed that the people in this area, the residents in this area, used to take tabarruk from these gardens. This area was predominantly gardens and there was river flowing and it was rich in soil and they themselves thought it was a miracle from Allah that they had fresh water that was flowing under this area. Now that we are finished here and we have visited the maqam and the khaymah of Ali ibn Hussein al-Sajjad salamullahi alayhi we will go on to the maqam and the khaymah of a Zainab al-Kubra, our lady Zainab, peace be upon her. With me now, my dear viewers, inshallah, we will depart and talk about the next explorer that came to Karbala and that witnessed this holy grounds, this holy makhayim. We have moved now from the khayma, from the tent of Imam al-Sajjad to the khayma of my master, my lady, Sayyida Zainab, peace be upon her. Now as I promised, I will narrate to you another evidence from history which talks about the history of this mukhayyam. Now we will go back from 1765 to the year 1604, Gregorian calendar, wherein a Portuguese explorer and traveler by the name of Pedro Teixeira. This Portuguese explorer was known for his trip along the entire length of the Amazon River and back. Now even in today's time, this is considered remarkable to be able to travel that distance and that time frame. Now in the year 1604, after Christ, this Portuguese explorer by the name of Pedro visited Karbala al muqaddasa And he narrates in his manuscripts, in his memoirs that in this year when he came this area used to be predominantly gardens and palm trees and he also narrates that the residents of the area used to take tabarruk from this area and used to drink water that used to run under this area they used to drink from the water clean from the water wash from the water and of course they also narrated that this water contained many blessings and many ma'ajis now, Pedro also narrates that when he came to this area, he saw another structure close to the maqam. This structure, the residents of this area claimed that it was for Al-Qasim ibn al-Imam al-Hassan al-Mujtaba. So we can say there is a possibility that Al-Qasim might be buried here in this area. Because of course, when you read the ziyarah, when you go visit Abi Abdullah al Hussein, you do not hear the mention of Al-Qasim. But of course, we cannot deny that he's buried in the Ha'ar of the Imam or that he's buried here. We accept both facts and we send our salams, our peace and our greetings. So now we have two Shawahid Tarikhiya from the year 1604 and from the year 17, 1765 that these explorers and these travelers came here to Karbala and they witnessed a lot of miracles, a lot of blessings and the residents here living in Karbala started to narrate to them about this area here that it is the Mukhayyam, the tents of Abi Abdullah al-Hussein, peace be upon him. Now I have for you one more shahid 
one more witness from history so that we may go to the next khayma, which is the khayma of Abi Abdullah al Hussein sallallahu alayhi as well as the khayma and where he used to pray his mihrab. Now, inshallah, we will visit this holy maqam and we will go on to the khayma. We were at the maqam of Sayyidah Zainab sallallahu alayhi We were at the tent of Sayyidah Zainab sallallahu alayhi And now we are at the tent of my master, Abi Abdullah al Hussein, Sayyidah Shuhada, the Prince of Martyrs alayhi salatu was salam. I gave you two references from history. One from Kartan, which was in the year 1700s. And then one from Pedro, the Portuguese traveler in the year 1600. And now I will go to one more shahid tarikhi. This shahid is Abu Talib Khan, who lived in the years of 1800s. He lived in the 1800s. Abu Talib narrates, and Abu Talib is of Turkish descent, and he was a Muslim, and he was a Shi'i as well. In his exploration, when he went to go visit Africa and Asia, he passed by Baghdad, he passed by Basra, and he went on a site to visit Abi Abdullah al-Hussein, peace be upon him. And in his memoirs, he narrates, he states, one-fourth of a mile from the city center lies the Mukhayyam, the holy tent of Abi Abdullah al-Hussein, as well as the maqam of Imam al-Sajjad, peace be upon him. He says, the wife of the mayor of the city had made a site for it and a structure of visitation and beside it and it was never completed because the mayor died. This, year, this is the words of Ali Khan and you can read about this in the impressions of Europe from Mirza Aba Talib Khan, the traveler of Talib, the travels of Talib in foreign lands dated 1810. Now my dear brothers and sisters, this here is the history behind the Mukhayyam. I gave you three historical evidences concerning this Mukhayyam and the Mashhur. There is a consensus amongst the ulama, the historians, that this here was the Mukhayyam of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Peace be upon him. May my soul be sacrificed for him. Every year on the 10th of Muharram, the Mawaleen, the lovers of Abi Abdullah al Hussein, they come here to this Mukhayyam and the Mawakib begin their Aza here from this Mukhayyam. They wear their white robes, they shave their heads, and they get ready for their Aza. They get ready for the holy ritual of Tatbir every year, starting here in this Mukhayyam. As well, on the 11th of Muharram, Laylatul Wahshah, that was the day in which Umar ibn Sa'ad alayhi la'natullah ordered his companions, ordered his army to burn these tents to the ground. The Khuddam here in Karbala, the Mawakib here in Karbala reenact that day. They put tents and they burn these tents to the ground so the believers can hear and can feel what's happened on Karbala. Now I ask my dear viewers, close your eyes and pretend that here we are in a barren wasteland. Pretend that there are tents around us. In these tents lies Sayyidah Zainab alone. In these tents lies Sakina alone. In these tents, the Fatimiyat, the companions are all gone. Abi Abdullah is gone. Aba Fadl al Abbas is gone. None remains. Now, if you close your eyes, you will hear the sound of Sayyidah Zainab talking to her father, saying, Wa Muhammadah. Talking to Rasulullah, saying, Wa Muhammadah. Talking to her father, saying, Wa Abata. You can hear the screeching moans and sounds and griefs of the Fatimiyat. 
because here at this Makhayyam is where Umar ibn Sa'ad ordered the burning of the tents. This here is where the grief of Fatima al Zahra. This here is where the grief of Sayyidah Zainab was shown. This here is where the army of Umar ibn Sa'ad burnt the tents, whipped the women, and took Sayyidah Zainab and everybody else as captive. This here in this holy maqam.